On October the 28th, all 23 of the first leg starters assembled off Punta del Este for the start of leg two of the 1989 Whitbread Round the World race. At 7,650 nautical miles, the journey to Fremantle makes this the longest leg of this 33,000 mile odyssey. It will take our mariners across the Southern Ocean, the domain of raging seas, icebergs, and the roaring forties, the winds that will reward our crews with some of the highest speeds to be seen anywhere in the race. Steinlager II and Fischer and Peichel were soon to take the lead on a northerly course, with Union Bank of Finland and Rothmans choosing the stronger winds further south. On day six, Fischer and Peichel swept into the lead, and the battle was on as Rothmans moved into third position. The Antarctic dolphins were welcome companions in the early part of leg two. Downwind sailing heavy winds, keep your calm nerve, and a Rossman's helps you do that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah? Alright, yeah. It's alright until it gets 55. Then it gets a bit hairy. Eleven days of strong winds had pushed Rothmans into second place, but it also started to take its toll on the equipment, and running repairs now started to take on a major role in the daily routine. Here we are, Southern Ocean, gripping stuff this is. Roaring 40s into the 50s. Cold out heads all, because had a little bit of housework on deck to do this morning. Broke our pole. Now you might ask, why did this happen? Shags, last night the wind got up really strong. Really yes, strong. we were going along quite well. Charging along with a 2.2. 40, 45 knots, and all of a sudden, there we were. Laid over on our side, and our pole had a broken leg. It was just flopping around in the breeze, wasn't it, Shag? Yes. Well, I mean, it's just one of those things. You sail, on the, sail to the limit down here. This is what you call ocean racing at its best, as you can see. Now, watch the bow of this go right into the water. And we're off again. Surfing it is. If you want to get the feeling of this, the best idea is to put a T-shirt and a pair of shorts on on a nice cold day and go out in the garden and get your neighbour and put the hose in over the fence and squirt you down for a few hours. You'll get the feeling of it. How do you reckon we're going, Shag? Well, we know we're about uh, second or third. If we keep this up now, I think we'll hold our position. We made about uh, six miles on merit. 
in the last 12 hours in these same conditions, so that's quite pleasing. The Russians did a good run last night. Yeah, they They're a little bit further north though, so not so cold. Here we go again. Whoa, 25 knots. How is that? I think we're going quite well. If the wind stays like this, I think it's our sort of conditions. Now we'll be going along with the pole our heads off for a little longer today, basically to get our courage back and put the spinnaker back up again. Now the point is that you, you don't always know when to take it down, if it comes down itself, but then you don't quite know when to put it up again. And that's the decision you've got to make. We've still got, we've still got 40 knots every now and again, it's a lot of wind for a spinnaker. You might notice we're all working with gloves on. That's because we don't want to break our fingernails. Look at the size of those waves up front. Never look behind you while you're steering. You never do it again. Here comes another big one. Off we go. Oh. This is that. Down a mountain. Down a mountain. Up. With poled out headsails, but no spinnaker, Rothman's reduced speed allowed Merritt to move into second place. And the following two days saw constant jockeying of position between the top runners, Steinlager II, Merritt and Rothman's, with Fisher and Peichel in the lead and Fortuna Extra Lights in fifth place. On day 13, Laurie Smith's average of 19.9 knots put Rothmans back into second place and was soon to close the gap between first and second to 35 miles. Well, we're about 500 miles to the west of Kerguelen Islands and for the last 36 hours we've been sailing side by side with Merritt. Um, about half a mile apart at the, at the very most, sometimes as little as a boat length apart. And uh, ten minutes ago, Merritt's crossed our bow, a boat length in front of us, and uh, now they're down to leeward by three or four boat lengths, and we're pulling them back again. So it's very, very close racing, and uh, quite interesting stuff. Both got exactly the same sails up, and there doesn't seem to be any more than a couple of hundredths of a knot a boat speed difference between us at any time. Sometimes we gain five degrees, sometimes they get it back. We've also got Steinlager about two and a half miles in front of us and uh, they've been pretty well at a fixed distance from us for 24 hours. So the three of us are all very much locked in combat at the moment. Unfortunately, the bad news is that Martel has slipped through to the south of us. Uh, they're about 140, 150 miles due south and uh, they've had much better breeze down there. We're all stuck in a high pressure system at the moment and Martella's just getting around the bottom of it. So they've taken second place away from us while the three of us have been engaged with each other. Marku Vikery's tactic of taking Martella far south swept her into a 24 mile lead. But the wind was soon to abate and she dropped back into eighth position. The calmer waters south of the Prince Edward Islands gave the crew a chance to repair a crack in the underside of the boom. An aluminium plate was fabricated and bolted on as a temporary measure until a permanent repair could be carried out in Fremantle. NCB Island also suffered similar damage. Sailmaker Russell Pickthall was also soon to be very busy patching the many holes in the mainsail caused by contact with the rigging. Laurie, how do you feel League 2 has gone? Um, all right, now pretty well. We're uh, three miles behind um, Fisher and Paykel. 
13 ahead of Merritt and 13 ahead of Steinleiter. So, so far, um, pretty pretty well. We, I guess in some ways we could have done better in that we need to make up a, a day or so on Steinleiter and Merritt. We've had our fair share of problems, Laurie. Um, do you think we've had more than our competitors? Um, hard to say at this point. I think we've had as uh, many problems as our competitors, you know, particularly with uh, spinning, broken spinning poles and uh, broken booms and uh, sails, broken sails, bits and pieces. But, uh, you know, it always seems worse on your own boat. I guess everyone else has had their own problems, but we certainly lost probably 60, 80 miles through breakages. But at least we've not had a major pr problem. Other than that, do you feel the boat has performed well? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the uh, heavy running conditions, I felt we were as fast as um, the uh, ultralight boats like Fortuna and Charles Redan. Uh, you know, on the days, on the, on the runs when uh, we had no breakages, we were we would have we were clocking 400 mile days. Um, but every time we uh, got into the strong conditions, something was breaking. Otherwise. Um, yeah, uh, the boat's as fast, if not faster, than uh, the rest of the fleet in these conditions. How have you found the crew's performance, especially in the freezing conditions down here? Oh, they've all performed pretty well, I think. Um, you know, the morale's been good and uh, no one's been complaining too much, but, uh, you know, we, we have been doing quite well, which always makes it easier. I, uh, I feel sorry for the people at the back who have to go through all that pain and... Uh, know they're three or four hundred miles behind but um, no everyone's pretty happy and uh, two days out now we're uh, you know we're uh, three miles off the lead so hopefully we'll get there okay. on the 27th day 400 miles from Fremantle Rothmans went into the lead for the first time as Fisher and Pico slipped back to fourth. She was to hold on to a slender two-mile lead until the morning of the last day, when first leg winner Steinlager II, enjoying superb conditions further north, slipped into the lead, leaving Rothmans and Merritt to battle for second place. <laughs> 